George Riley. Um, I've been working at National Center for Biotechnology Information and CBI at the uh, National Library of Medicine at NIH for the past 10 years on ClinVar. And um, today I'm going to talk a little bit about variant nomenclature, standard practice, and some of the errors that we see in uh, HGVS. Um, I have no conflict of interest to declare, but I do want to say that this work was supported by the intramural research program of the NIH at the National Library of Medicine. So today, um, the learning objectives are, we're gonna to try to um, make sure that you're able to summarize variant nomenclature standards, to identify common errors in HGVS expressions, and to formulate valid HGVS expressions for complex types of variants. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, just as there are multiple different languages that you can use to say hello, um, there are also multiple different alphabets that you can use to spell hello. We can draw the analogy um, for variant nomenclature standards to different languages. Um, and within any one of those standards for to express um, a variant, you can express it different ways, and you know that could be basically the alphabets to spell them. This is important because we want to make sure that we're all on the same page when we're you know writing reports and reading reports, um, and for databases when we're trying to aggregate um, different expressions for the same variant, we want to make sure we're all talking about the same thing. So for variant nomenclature standards, there are basically um, a couple of requirements. You need to have a reference sequence. You need to have the location on that sequence. And you need the description of the change. <clears throat> the standards we're going to talk about today include HGVS. Um, this is probably one of the most common uh, standards for expressing uh, variants. Um, it has some real benefits in that it's commonly used. Um, it's easily human readable. Um, however, there are some downsides. The downsides are it's not particularly easily computable. And when the expressions get complex, it can be hard to see what's going on. We're also going to talk about genomic coordinates. Um, there are some real benefits to genomic coordinates in that it's easily computable. Um, and it also is pretty close to what's actually um, measured when we're actually doing sequencing or probe-based methods. However, there are some downsides, which is that it's not very human readable. Finally, I'll touch on speedy or sequence position deletion insertion. Um, that is a tool that ClinVar uses. It's particularly good at um, managing HGVS expressions where the uh, variant could be expressed in a couple of different locations. It's also easily computable. And uh, ClinVar uses that tool to um, map the uh, different variant expressions onto the genome. In addition to those, there are, of course, other standards, including the VCF, which I'll touch on briefly. Um, which isn't really a, a variant nomenclature standard so much as a file standard. There's the VRS or VERS uh, standard, which is a computing uh, uh, standard. And there's also ISCN, which is the standard for describing uh, chromosome rearrangements. So what we'll talk about today is HTVS format, some of the common format errors that we've seen at ClinVar over the past 10 years of processing variants, things that are not necessarily errors, but not straightforward either, um, some more complex HTVS and the errors associated. Then we'll talk about genomic coordinates and their requirements um, and their format. And finally, <clears throat> I'm going to leave you with some resources for variant nomenclature. So HGVS format, I'm sure you are all um, pretty well versed in this, but I'm going to touch on it very briefly just to make sure that we're all on the same page. <clears throat> um, and so 
The uh, standard begins with the reference sequence accession number. That's followed by the version number, the colon, which is used as a separator, then the coordinate type, which is typically either um, <clears throat> coding for NMs or G dot for genomic on NCs and NGs. That's followed by the location, either a single number, nucleotide number, or a range. And then, of course, the change. For numbering HTVS on the genomic references, these are NCs or NGs in G dot coordinates, it's very simple. It begins with the first nucleotide and it runs right up to the last nucleotide of the reference sequence. <clears throat> Transcript reference numbering is a little bit more complex because the numbering is in relation to the coding sequence itself. So it starts with the first nucleotide of the initiation codon, which is labeled C.1. The first nucleotide upstream of that is labeled C.1 and uh, C.1 rather, and minus two, minus three, and so forth up to the beginning of the reference sequence. At the other end of the coding sequence, it's labeled in reference to the last nucleotide, after, the first nucleotide after the termination codon. That first nucleotide after the termination codon is C dot asterisk one, and they get asterisk two, and so on and so forth to the end of the reference sequence. When you're numbering intronic HGVS, um, actually the format of intronic HGVS, the standard says that because the um, coding reference sequences, the NMs, don't actually include the intronic sequence, that you need to include in the uh, expression, you need to include the genomic reference to which that coding reference is aligned. And then the coding reference is included in parentheses and then you use uh, C dot um, coding reference coordinates. Um, so this expression here without the genomic reference is technically invalid. Um, however, the, um, this is very commonly used in the community and uh, ClinVar team has made the decision to actually accept these as this is basically unambiguous. Um, it's pretty clear what is intended. It's also worth noting that ClinVar cannot currently uh, process expressions that include the reference sequence. So when you're numbering <clears throat> the intronic HGVS, these are again in um, reference to the exon, the location is reference to the exon. So if this is nucleotide C.61 here, the first nucleotide before that exon is gonna be C.61 minus one. Um, at the other end of the exon, the first nucleotide after C.90 at the end of the exon will be C.90 plus one. So let me talk a little bit about some of the common format errors that we see at ClinVar. Um, one of the most common is an incorrect reference base. So in this case, this could be due to a typographical error, or it can be a situation where the uh, reference is, you know, the expression is referring to the wrong base, uh, the wrong strand. So if the, um, on the, genomic reference that a nucleotide is an A. In this particular case, the gene lies on the opposite strand, and therefore on the coding reference, that reference base has to be a T. We also see um, locations that are past the end of the reference sequence. So if this is um, location is C dot minus 1000 on this particular reference. The issue is that the beginning of the reference sequence 
is actually C dot minus 236. And therefore, that expression is invalid. Similarly, at the other end, the end of that reference sequence is C dot asterisk 2697. And therefore, anything after that is also invalid. So in this case, this expression needs to actually be um, formulated as a genomic um, HGVS, either on an NC or on an NG. We also see uh, expressions missing the reference version number. So here we have the version number missing. This should be um, dot three, version number three. And the reason that's important is that as the versions change, both the uh, location and the sequence can actually change. So this is invalid, but this is valid. Um, the standard also says that spaces in HTVS are not allowed in any HTVS expression. Um, so including spaces is invalid. The ClinVar team has made the decision to actually accept those and then we convert that expression into um, uh, an expression without spaces. HGVS also has a three prime rule. So this applies to deletions, duplications, and insertions. There are situations where you have um, a, say, as an example, a run of T's here. You can express um, a deletion on any one of those T's, and it gives you the exact same result. However, the standard says that any uh, change should be expressed at the most three prime position possible. So if these are coding C dot three to five, instead of expressing this on the first nucleotide C dot three del T, this should actually be expressed as C dot five del T. Um, the same thing applies, of course, for the genomic references. Um, ClinVar has actually made the decision, we do accept these expressions. It can be sometimes hard to know, you know, whether the, your expression is valid or not, but we accept these and what we do is we convert them to the appropriate um, C.5, the, the three prime shifted expression so that they can be aggregated appropriately um, and displayed appropriately on the web and in our data. There is, however, an exception to the three prime rule. When you have um, two nucleotides that are the same at an exon boundary, then you are not supposed to express it um, three prime necessarily. So for example, our genomic sequence here shows um, this T at the end of one exon and this T at the beginning of the following exon. Um, it's not appropriate to describe this on the uh, upstream, the downstream T, because that would be different, a completely different location on the genomic sequence. So it's appropriate to describe this on the first T here, not using the three prime rule and not expressing it on the, uh, uh, the second T. Of course, if you express this on a genomic reference, then the result is, of course, unambiguous. So um, we've talked about some things that are common format errors, but now let's talk about things that aren't necessarily errors, but aren't necessarily straightforward either. So insertions, Rather than the location being a single nucleotide, the standard requires that it be expressed as a range of two nucleotides between which that sequence is inserted. The reasoning behind that, according to HTVS, is that using a single um, location could potentially be ambiguous and it wouldn't necessarily be clear if someone assumed that the insertion was before the nucleotide, before the location instead of after the location. Another issue is 
um, expressing the inserted sequence as a number of nucleotides instead of as actual explicit sequence. This is strongly discouraged by HGVS and ClinVar has made the decision to not actually um, accept that. It, um, because generally speaking, that sequence has been, you know, the, the sequence has been sequenced and the sequence is known. An exception to um, using insertion is in a case where you have a nucleotide that's inserted next to the same, adjacent to the same nucleotide. So in this case, you have an A that's inserted next to an A. And instead of describing that as an insertion, HDVS says that that is invalid, but it should be rather described as a duplication. <clears throat> the reasoning behind that, according to HGVS, is not that that uh, duplication increases accuracy, but rather that it decreases the complexity of the expression. Um, ClinVar team has made the decision to actually accept these uh, because it's not always easy to figure things out. And when we get these expressions, what we do is we convert them to a duplication. There's also the issue of large inserted sequences. Um, nobody wants to have an expression that has, you know, 10,000 nucleotides as part of the expression. And so the HGVS standard allows insertion of sequence by reference. So in this case, the reference sequence is this, and the inserted sequence is actually uh, nucleotides 858 to 895 on that reference sequence that gets inserted between 849 and 850. <clears throat> the standard also allows um, insertion by reference from a different reference. So this reference is different than that reference. And in that case, if you're um, referring to a different reference, you include that uh, expression, that location within square brackets. You have the uh, reference sequence, the coordinates, and the range of nucleotides that's inserted between 849 and 850. The same thing can be done using genomic sequences and genomic references. And it's worth noting that you can also mix and match reference types. So for example, you could use a genomic reference sequence um, in this expression instead of just an NM and vice versa. There's also the issue of, we sometimes see um, HGVS expressions inserting an ALU. And even though um, the uh, sequence is generally included, the ALU sequences are generally included in nucleotide databases, um, users are, don't always care about what the actual ALU sequence is, about which ALU is being inserted they're frequently more interested in just the fact that there is an insertion of an ALU. So even though this is technically invalid according to the HGVS standard, um, the ClinVar team has made the decision to accept these expressions um, and also line, sign, SVA, and L1. So deletions can either be uh, a single nucleotide, so you have a single location, or it can be a range of sequence, so you have a range of nucleotide location. It can also include the explicit sequence. Um, HGVS actually recommends not including the sequence. And the reasoning behind that, their reasoning is that um, if you have a typo in that explicit sequence, that you'll create an inconsistency between the location and the expressed sequence. Um, the downside of not including that explicit reference sequence is that you don't get validation of that sequence against your location. Most systems that um, accept HGVS expressions 
will actually validate the uh, explicit sequence against the location. So there are also large deletions. Typically, if these have uh, probe-based methods, there'll be uncertain breakpoints, and we'll talk about that a little bit more as we talk about more complex HGVS and some of the HGVS errors that are associated. So with HGVS exon deletions, you have uncertain breakpoint locations. These are typically detected via probe-based methods. You also have very large deletions and uh, duplications. When we have the really large ones, typically these are better described in genomic coordinates um, and using copy number gain or loss as the type of the variant. We'll talk about these a little bit more. So as an example for a deletion with uncertain breakpoint locations, this black bar indicates the known deleted sequence, the sequence that's known to be deleted. The gray bars um, indicate the range of sequence within which lies the uncharacterized breakpoint. So the outer start here is representing the last detected five prime probe. The inner start is represented by the first missing five prime probe. And the inner stop is the last missing three prime probe. And the outer stop is the last detected three prime probe. So given the locations for these probes, you can then create an HGVS expression. So for this exon deletion, um, we have our reference sequence, our G dot coordinates. The range of these two probes here is expressed using an underscore to denote a range, not a dash. Um, and it's included within parentheses and the parentheses indicate uncertainty. So we know that there's a breakpoint within these, but we don't know where in this range that breakpoint lies. That's followed by another underscore to indicate the range between these two. And then you have the locations of the downstream um, probes. So this particular um, expression indicates uh, a deletion of four exons. Um, the probes are locations are indicated by the arrows here. When you have um, described these on these uh, uncertain breakpoints on transcript references, um, it's a little bit different. And HGVS has several recommendations as to how to do that. The first is using the actual probe locations themselves, the positions of the probes. Um, and these locations are going to be described in reference to the exon ends. So if this exon end is C.316, and if that probe lies 15 nucleotides into the intron, then this is going to be described as 316 plus 15. And if this probe is 15 nucleotides into the intron this direction, then it's going to be 317 minus 15. And similarly, at the other end, you have 631 plus 15 underscore 632 minus 15, followed by deletion. The other um, way of describing this that HGVS recommends is um, less specific in terms of the actual location of the, uh, the probes. Rather than using the probe locations, it suggests using the intron ends. People commonly do this because it's a little bit easier. You don't need to know your exact probe locations. In that case, um, you talk about the intron ends. The first nucleotide of the intron is 316 plus 1. The last nucleotide of the intron is 317 minus 1. And similarly, at the other end of the, uh, of the deletion. 
Describing this as just the exon ends is actually invalid according to the HTVS standard. And the rationale for that is that the range that's described is where the first nucleotide is deleted. Um, in most cases, we know because it's been detected that the last nucleotide of the exon is in fact present therefore isn't deleted and therefore this expression is invalid. Similarly, using <clears throat> a um, question mark to denote an unknown location is typically not valid. And the reasoning behind this is this um, describes a breakpoint that lies somewhere between the last nucleotide of this intron going all the way back to the very beginning of the chromosome. Typically, that's not the case, and so usually this is invalid. We also see some other <clears throat> exon deletion description errors, describing it as the gene followed by exons and the number of uh, the exon numbers that were deleted. Um, or describing it as just the nucleotides, so the beginning of the first uh, exon deleted to the end of the last exon deleted. This is generally invalid because it doesn't indicate uncertainty. There's no parentheses. Um, and, you know, in a situation where that's probe-based, this is inaccurate. There is a situation where this might be valid if this were detected solely by RNA sequencing and there were no other evidence, this might in fact be a valid expression. In this case, using just the uh, 317 uh, minus question mark to uh, indicate uh, an unknown uh, location within the intron, that's not valid, doesn't indicate the intron number, and there are no uh, parentheses to indicate uncertainty. So this is also invalid. When we talk about duplications in HDVS, the HDVS standard requires that uh, duplications be tandem duplications. So in a situation where you have an insertion of TAGA, that has to be right adjacent to the uh, sequence that's being duplicated. So C.20 to 23 dupe, that is in fact um, valid, as is uh, 20 to 23 dupe uh, TAGA, so including the explicit sequence. In a situation where you're using probe-based method, typically this is not a valid expression because since this is probe-based, there's no evidence that this duplicated sequence actually lies adjacent to the original sequence. Therefore, those should be described um, as a copy number gain, typically in, um, in genomic coordinates. So when we talk about repeats um, in HTVS, it can be kind of complex. Um, unique repeats, repeats of a single um, repeat unit, those are described with a location that describes the first nucleotide of the first repeat unit. That's followed by the repeat sequence and followed by the number of repeats. Um, this kind of expression is a little um, confusing in some ways because the downside of it is that you can't really tell um, the difference between the change and what's on the reference sequence itself. So you can't tell that this is actually a single um, repeat unit deletion um, and results in the deletion of a single leucine. There's also rules in regard to repeats in coding sequence. So HTVS standard states that if you have a repeat in coding sequence, that only three nucleotide repeat units are allowed if it affects the reading frame. 
So the CAG repeat change, that's acceptable because it doesn't affect the reading frame. And uh, a GT repeat change, if it's in the intron, that's also acceptable because it doesn't affect the reading frame. However, if you have a repeat of five T nucleotides that lies within the coding um, reference, uh, within the coding area, that's actually invalid. And the HTVS standard says to use insertion or duplication instead. Um, mixed repeats obviously can be relatively complex. And the expression differs a little bit in that the location is described as the location as a range. The first is the first nucleotide of the first repeat unit. And the second is the last nucleotide of the last repeat unit. So first nucleotide of the first repeat unit to the last nucleotide of the last repeat unit on the reference sequence not necessarily in the change. That's followed by the repeat sequence, followed by the number of repeats, and finally by the uh, other repeats in the, uh, the sequence, in the change. So these can actually be pretty complex and allow multiple interspersed repeat units within the expression. It's worth noting that if you add up the number of nucleotides here in the location range, it's not necessarily, probably won't, add up to the same number of nucleotides described in the variant. And the reasoning for that, of course, is because this range is on the reference sequence, not in the variant. The HGVS standard also allows um, description of a single part of a mixed repeat. So if you want to just talk about this one, a change in this one section of the repeat, mixed repeat unit, you can describe just that as a, a single unique repeat. So in that case, what you're talking about is just a single location, again, for just the first nucleotide of the repeat. So there are a couple of issues with repeat HDVS. First of all, the HDVS standard has been evolving and continues to evolve. So what is valid today or yesterday may not be valid tomorrow. Um, in addition to that, there's um, somewhat ambiguous description for the ranges of repeats, uh, depending on where you look on the web pages for uh, describing the HGVS standard. Um, and finally, the three prime rule also applies to repeats. And this can be a little confusing because, so for example, in ATX N7, in the literature, there's published a CAG repeat. However, if you apply the three prime rule, in fact, that turns out to be an AGC repeat because it gets shifted to the right. Um, the three prime rule also applies to both negative and positive strands, which can lead to interesting situations. So for example, you can have on this uh, sequence here, you have um, an ATG repeat. However, the gene lies on the opposite strand. And in that case, um, rather than getting a CAT, you wind up with TCA. So other presentation, representations of uh, repeats. Um, so if you have a known range of repeats that cause disease, for example, for example, if you have know for a fact that eight to 25 repeats is pathogenic, this can be expressed by using a range within square bracket, the square brackets. ClinVar accepts this. And similarly, if you know that a uh, range that is more than 51 nucleotides is either uh, pathogenic or benign, you can describe that as 
51 underscore question mark. Um, however, you cannot describe more than 51 um, repeats using the greater than symbol. That is actually invalid and uh, ClinVark cannot process. Um, in a situation where um, this is a little bit more unusual, but it can happen, um, if you have a patient and you cannot determine the number of repeats, but it, that number of repeats would lie within a range, then you can describe it with parentheses um, within the square brackets, the parentheses indicating the uncertainty, not knowing where that repeat um, lies within the range of 8 to 25. Um, similarly, you can do the same thing for more than 51. However, um, ClinVar has made the decision that because these are relatively uncommon situations, we don't actually accept those because typically um, people are either describing a known, um, you know, either the, the number of repeats is known or they're talking about um, a population. We also see um, expressions that uh, say an insertion of a single repeat unit, and that actually is not valid according to the HGS standard. Same thing applies to deletions of a number of repeat units. And finally, using parentheses to indicate a range is not valid. So we've talked about HGVS. We'll move on to genomic coordinates and some of the requirements there. It's worth noting that um, the VCF is actually a file standard, um, not so much uh, a standard for an expression, the standalone expression. There's really no standard for a shorthand representation of genomic coordinates, but there are requirements. You need to have the assembly, such as GRCH 37 or 38, the chromosome number, the coordinates on that chromosome, the reference sequence, and the alternate sequence. So we see shorthand expressions like this, where we have the assembly, the chromosome number, the location, and the reference and the alternate sequences. In this expression, you see the chromosome number followed by the assembly, and in this case, they've actually done something interesting. They've actually used a sort of a, an HGVS style representation of the change. That works. In this case, it's the same as the first. However, they use dashes instead of colons as a separator. In these expressions, these are all invalid because they share, share the same issue, which is it doesn't include the assembly. Um, and this location on GRCH38 is going to be very different than the location on GRCH37. So all of these expressions here are ambiguous and therefore invalid. We can also talk a little bit about the format of the reference and the alternate sequences, and this is typically in regard to what gets submitted to a, a database like ClinVar. So for SNPs, it's easy. You've got the reference, which is your reference nucleotide, and the changed nucleotide for the alternate. Um, it's a little bit more complex for insertions and indels. Um, the VCF standard does not allow dashes. Um, and therefore, the reference for an insertion is the nucleotide upstream of the insertion point. So the insertion sequence goes after this nucleotide. This nucleotide is referred to by VCF as the padding base. Um, the alternate sequence is going to include the padding base and then the inserted sequence. The non-VCF method allows the use of a dash. Um, so in this case, the reference would be a dash, and the alternate would be the inserted sequence. Um, the location is going to be the nucleotide upstream of that inserted sequence. So it's the same location as the padded ba padding base, 
in the VCF. For indels, both of these are the same. The reference sequence is the deleted sequence. The alternate sequence is the sequence that's inserted. For deletions, again, with the VCF, the reference is going to include that padding base followed by the deleted sequence. And the alternate sequence is going to be just the padding base. For the non VCF method, the reference is going to be the deleted sequence and the alternate sequence is just a dash to represent, you know, the null sequence. VCF also has a five prime rule as opposed to the HDVS standards three prime rule. So where three prime, the HDVS shifts three prime, VCF shifts five prime. And this can, of course, lead to a certain amount of confusion. The ClinVar team has decided to apply the VCF five prime rule to all expressions of genomic coordinates. And so when we get genomic coordinates, we will actually shift those to the five prime most location. This confusion sometimes arises when you look at um, the HGVS, that uh, genomic HGVS that ClinVar displays and look at the genomic coordinates for the same variant that ClinVar displays. And you see that the location is different because one's shifted to the right, HGVS, and one is shifted to the left, the VCF. So when you have really large changes of structural variants, um, for genomic coordinates, the sequences can be way too large to include in the ref or the alternate sequence. Um, and in that case, we can uh, express these as starts and stops. So for sequence breakpoints, where the breakpoint is known, we can represent them as a simple start and stop. For imprecise deletions and copy number gains, these can be represented with inner and outer starts and stops, kind of like what we did with HGVS. So for sequence breakpoints, our example is the deleted sequence. Our start is the first affected nucleotide. The stop is the last affected nucleotide. When you have uncertain breakpoint locations, so with probe-based methods, again, you have your probe locations for your outer and inner starts and inner and outer stops. And when you're going to express these in a submission for sequence breakpoints, you have your start and stop locations, and the variant type is described as a deletion. For uncertain breakpoints, you have your inner and outer start and stop locations, the probe locations. The variant type is described as a copy number loss. ClinVar strongly recommends that you include the reference copy number and the copy number, the alternate copy number. So in this case, for copy number loss, the reference copy number might be two, and the alternate copy number, the variant copy number, might be one to represent a loss of one copy. In the case that you have um, a duplication, then the variant type would instead be copy number gain, and your copy number might be two, and your alternate, your variant copy number might be three or four or however many. So we've talked about HGVS and genomic coordinates. Um, I'd like to give you some resources for variant nomenclature. The HGVS standard is located here. The VCF standard can be found here. And I'll ask uh, them to put these uh, links into the chat so you can copy them out and have them, because obviously you can't get at them from the slides here. In addition to the standards, <clears throat> There are some variant validation tools that I'd like to talk about. Um, variant validator is one, mutilizer is another, 
And the NCBI variation services, which include the speedy tool, is a third. These all have their benefits and their deficits. In terms of the uh, NCBI variation services, if you have developers, I'd strongly suggest you have them <clears throat> take a look. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, take a look because they might want to actually include um, the, the use of those tools in their own tools. Um, I strongly suggest that you take a look at the demo page for that because that shows you some of the things that can be done with those tools. The speedy data model has been published in bioinformatics and um, it is available through PubMed um, and that paper is open source and so is free to read. So today I've talked about variant nomenclature standards and format some of the errors that we've seen in the last 10 years of our experience with processing variants at ClinVar and some of the complexities both in, um, in structure and uh, in dealing with those. I hope that this is gonna be helpful to you in your daily work, whether that involves reading reports or writing reports, doing bio curation or preparing um, submissions to variant databases. I'd like to thank the development team for ClinVar, um, the ClinVar curator team, the ClinVar leadership team, and the leadership team of both NCBI and NLM. And with that, I would be happy to take any questions. That was terrific. Thank you so much, Dr. Riley, uh, for that great presentation. I think that just cleared up so many uh, questions that we have and just really, really nice presentation. So thank you. And I did put those links in the chat. Um, so everyone has access to those and also the um, uh, email address for ClinVar as well for inquiries. Um, so does anyone have questions? Um, maybe I'll ask a question then. Um, so as I said, this was, was really, really great. And um, I think one of the challenges that we come across uh, as curators is often with the older literature, um, with these sort of legacy variants that are not following the uh, typical HGVS uh, nomenclature. So I know you provided a few resources there, like a Mutalizer, for example, but um, I'm just wondering if you have any sort of general advice for um, sorting out those types of variants. I mean, sometimes there just isn't sufficient data if they're not providing like a chromatogram or something like that, but just any any uh, advice that you have for us for those legacy variants. Um, yeah, I, I have I have run into the exact same problems. We've we have dealt with that over the years. Um, you know, as you pointed out, where there are chromatograms or there is some sort of information in the paper, you can sometimes actually find those using BLAST or something um, and actually figure out what the, the modern location is. Um, sometimes you can also um, get additional information if they describe things in terms of the amino acids. Um, sometimes there's just just not enough information there. Um, and then short of actually you know, contacting the authors, there's not much that you can actually do. Um, but, you know, yes, I, I agree that that is, um, that's a situation that can be, can be difficult. And we have, we have all felt that particular pain. <laughs> yeah, and hopefully now with the standards like HGVS, um, more publications will include that. So it's less of an issue, but appreciate that. Um, and we have a question here, <clears throat> excuse me, from Deb. Um, what happens in cases of overlapping genes or genes nearby? For example, a deletion outside a gene, which gene does it belong to? The closest gene? If it's upstream from a gene on the left, but it's downstream from a gene on the right? Um, oh yeah, if this makes sense. So basically with overlapping genes, how do you, I guess, which transcript do you use? For um, and, and so that, that's actually, you know, that's a great question. And, and one we actually see fairly commonly at ClinVar. 
um, if the gene lies on a uh, coding reference, then it's considered to you know, belong, quote unquote, to that, that gene. Uh, but there can be situations where you have overlapping genes, and if it, you know, it may lie in uh, the introns for two genes, um, ClinVar processing should, in fact, um, list both of those genes and actually, um, actually provide the expressions, the HGBS expressions for, for both of those genes. Um, there are situations where it's, you know, well outside, and then in that case, it, it may not, you know, belong to one or the other. When you are actually submitting to ClinVar, um, if that's the issue, then you can actually submit the gene as well as the, uh, the HGVS expression or the genomic coordinates, um, which may um, help to clarify things, um, you know, if it's if it's in a promoter or something like that, um, and the other thing too, of course, is you know, comments are always helpful um, to help users understand what is um, what is the intent of a uh, the interpretation of a particular variant. Great, thank you. Um, so any other questions for Dr. Riley? If not, I have a bonus slide. Oh, great. Um, and so if anybody else has questions, feel free to go ahead and put them in the chat. But in the meantime, OK, let's see if I can actually get to my next slide. All right, it's frozen. There we go. So. I didn't talk about this because sometimes we don't have time enough to talk about this, but for HGVS expression of alleles and heterozygotes, alleles that are on the same chromosome, in other words, in cis, the two different changes or multiple different changes are expressed within square brackets, separated by one or more semicolons, depending on how many changes you have. When those are expressed, when you have an allele that are alleles on different chromosomes, i.e. in trans, each of the sets of changes on one chromosome is expressed within square brackets, and those changes are uh, separated by a semicolon. And where you have alleles where the phase is unknown, then what you do is you just put all the expressions separated by semicolons, but the semicolon itself is in parentheses to indicate uncertainty. And so there's your bonus for you. <laughs> Thanks so much. Um, and we do have another question as well. Um, so uh, is ClinVar planning on updating amino acid changes in frame shifts? Uh, I've noticed the shortened versions in most entries, uh, such as p.glue5fs. But my understanding is the longer version is preferred, such as p.glue 5 val fs ter 5 um, I don't know that we have that on our to-do list, but it's certainly something worth um, knowing. And, it, you know, when you have questions in terms of um, things that would be helpful to your usage of ClinVar, we like to hear that feedback because that's how we do our planning. Um, our users are what we're trying to serve. So answer to that question, I don't really know. I, I don't know of any plans to do that, but if that would be helpful enough, that's certainly something worth uh, mentioning to us. And mailing to clinvar at ncbi.nlm.nih.gov, which is in the chat, is how you should um, uh, how sh you should contest, uh, contact us for questions like that. Also, if you want, you can email me. Great, thank you. Um, oh, here's another question. Um, okay, uh, why are protein extensions that are due to frame shifts not as clearly described compared to variation in a stop codon? For example, RONX1, um, C.1412 to 
1413 dupe in uh, this particular transcript is described as P uh, leucine 472 alanine frame shift star 123 instead of um, the frame, sh uh, excuse me, frame shift extension. Uh, I see. Um, and that's probably, um, that is probably a matter of how our processing works. You know, the, the issue is that, that computationally HDVS is just terrible. <laughs> it's just not easy to compute these kinds of things. Um, and I think the reason for that is at this point, we just, we don't have, um, uh, processing that does that. 